Screen is. Ready? Hey, hey, brother Jerry. Hey, can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear. You. Good evening. I'm I'm Jerry McIntosh, and this is Our Voices, the People's Media. Be sure to tune in to Our Voices every second and fourth Sunday, and on the first and third Sunday, community conversation. Um, tonight, we're going to address the issue of um, police reform. Um, that has supposedly took place in Washington, but Mr. Myers is going to talk about that tonight. We have with us tonight, uh, as on our host, Mr. Bill Snow, who is the author of the book, From the Project to the Boardroom. We have Dr. Isaac Williams, who is the great pastor of Greater True Vine Baptist Church, uh, also moderator for this area. We have Mr. Vernon Watson, who is the owner of WBQP-TV, uh, uh, YouTube, with YouTube channel, also we are watching on Fire Stick and also Ruku. We have with us also Mr. Calter uh, Mayors, who is also going to be talking with us about what's going on with police reform and, uh, and also um, who is an attorney, but we have Mr. Howard Gunn, who is with the Black Farmers Association, but we're going to Get right into it. Good evening, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, we're going to first start. With Dr. William, we're going to start with you about the, the vaccine. We're going to uh, hit on that a little bit. How is it? See how everything is going with the uh, vaccine and, um, you know, with the after the kickoff, how is things going now? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Jerry, and good evening to each of you. Uh, yes, I, I do think we, we, we must stay vigilant on our endeavors, our efforts to continue to wage war against this, this virus. Right now, uh, the numbers are trending in the right direction. Uh, just about 100,000 people across the country uh, are being affected, and that's the lowest it's been since uh, August, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, the hospital rates are going down and the death. Uh, I, I think we got about 88 people in the hospital right here in the, in the local hospital. That's real good from up to just about 300 uh, back in uh, uh, in early part of August and September. Uh, that's good. Uh, and uh, I, 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 do, I do want to warn that, that this still is a serious uh, challenge ahead of us in my estimation. Uh, I think we still have time before I would call the last big wave of COVID affecting us. Uh, and especially, uh, I looked at an article uh, just a few days ago on, on the number of law enforcement officers that, that has died, uh, have died uh, 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 in, 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 in the state of Florida, over 66 officers have died from COVID uh, uh, only second to text with 87, over 200 and, and I think 40, 250 law enforcement officers have died from COVID 
and and they are fighting on every municipality against the vaccine. I, I really don't understand it. Uh, I just don't. Uh, and and to me, one death is too much if we can prevent it. Our, 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 our unpreventable death, yes. But if we can prevent a death, and so and so, I know everything is opened up and everybody fairly happy right now because uh, your your favorite football team won last night, Alabama. Oh no, they didn't win. They wow, got... they didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they, yeah, they they packing out the stadiums everywhere. Florida State won. Uh, but that was a lucky game. But but on a serious note, uh, uh, I still want to ask all of you all if you would partner with me, become co-laborers, cohorts in in this endeavor to to influence everybody you can to still get vaccinated. I believe that that this this last pandemic was a pandemic of the unvaccinated, and we lost a lot of precious lives. A lot of precious lives that I believe that if if we can we can push that needle uh, a little further. And one good thing, a lot of people got infected. They contracted the virus during this last time. And so they have a certain amount of immunity that perhaps allow them to get to get past this, this initial, initial onslaught problem right in late December uh, and January. Because so then with the ones who vaccinated and the ones who've been infected, that, that will help a lot. And we are very hopeful that by the beginning of November, uh, we'll be able to start getting our children from five to 11. Uh, Pfizer has submitted for FDA approval for emergency use. And uh, CDC said they're looking to take it up in the early part of November and approve in a few days. And so if we can continue to get our children vaccinated and, 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 and engage the anti-vaxxers, I, I'm really, I, this is not really me, Brother Bill, uh, 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 but, but brother, brother Carlton, but I'm softening up some on the, on the anti-vaxxers. I, I do understand that there's a certain amount of mistrust and distrust in, with this here. And, 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 and so I'm, I'm trying to uh, speak to the better angel in this situation now that, that yes, I do, but will, will you do this to help someone else out? With, I, I understand your distrust, but but in community, uh, we sacrifice all the time for our loved ones, our families, our friends, people we care about. We can 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 you take this one for the team? And so I think if if we can ask people to take it for a team, will you take this one for the team? Uh, I think we make and make more progress. So that's that's basically what I got uh, on the COVID. Uh, right now, things are looking, they are trending in the right direction. But now notice, they was doing this earlier over in India. They was doing this early in London and, and, and these other, they was trending in the right direction. And just like that, this COVID just, just popped back up and, and just, so, so I don't want us to let our guards down and, and still encourage. I still have an incentive, anybody listening to me in the, in the city of Pensacola zip code, uh, to I thought I was gonna get rid of all of it so far, but but uh, just a few days ago, uh, Mr. Uh, Hill he was having conversation with a young lady uh, that 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 worked for Community Health, and and uh, she said that it dried up. No one's coming to get the shot anymore. <laughs> And, and I started to say, because we were sending the folks to you, you didn't partner with us like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were sending folk down there. You wasn't partner right, but I didn't say that. It, it could be other reasons, but we start redirecting all our folks to Excamia uh, Health Department. We don't, we don't direct them to community health anymore. We, we direct them down there. Uh, and so, but, but, but people are, are pulling back now from getting the vaccine. And so it's real. If they don't dry completely up when they used to have lines out there. Uh, so we still got to beat the bush. We still got to encourage. Got, they got to hear from trusted voices coming from a trusted venue, a trusted face, and a trusted space saying, it's OK. I'm with you, my brother. I am with you, my sister. You are our queen. You are our king. We, we need you, our prince and princess. We need you on the other side of this pandemic, just as God told Joshua and Caleb, I need you all on the other side of the wilderness. I'm telling my beloved brothers and sisters, we need you on the other side of this pandemic. All right, that was uh, 
that that yeah, that was very inspiring. I tell you, we got to get you on them PSAs, man. Because if I were not vaccinated, I'm telling you, after your spiel just now, I would run out and get it. That was very inspiring. But you did say one thing early on that uh, I'm trying to reason with. That was that you didn't understand why law enforcement that you you can't put wrap your mind around why they wouldn't get vaccinated. Well. I've got, uh, 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 I don't know how uh, accurate it is, but we have to remember that law enforcement are, uh, for, they are, for Trump, those are Trumpers to, to, to the bottoms of their hearts. And then a lot of them marry into the nursing industry. So that follows suit with them. So in a rational mind, it doesn't make absolutely any sense. But from a hate-filled, uh, racist, prejudiced perspective, they are going down with the ship, my friend. They w are willing to die for what they believe to prove to a person that had sense enough to get vaccinated, but started this foolishness, and it has infiltrated his ranks and the law enforcement I know you have a brother-in-law that's former law enforcement, but law enforcement is no friend to our community. Law enforcement, they're anti-us. We're not anti-law enforcement. We're just warriors that will not lay down. Uh, <laughs> and, and, but uh, they're, they're no friend to the black community. So I don't know. Maybe God's trying to tell us something. You know, one, uh, let me say this first. Um, Carol is off tonight because um, she's with her mother at the hospital again. So um, uh, her mother, we had to take her back to the hospital last night. So um, she's there. And uh, hopefully uh, everything go good and she'll be back next Sunday. So um, um, we are sending all our prayers up for her mother uh, to get better. But again, um, Dr. William, the reason so many people was, uh, I think, was uh, disenchanted or indifference to to um, the vaccine is because the way it, when they first brought it out, they brought it out as if it was some kind of, uh, you know, something that they did overnight, you know, and then uh, it was it became a political football in um, between Trump and and, and uh, all the Republicans uh, in the in in the hierarchy of the Republican Party are using it as a political football to uh, uh, discourage people from from getting the from getting the, the vaccine and the rollout has been has been just messed up ever since. Even under the Biden administration, the rollout and the language that was used has not been good language for. Um, to encourage the masses of the people to go and get the vaccine. And you were right about those football games. You, you see 90, 100,000 people at those games. Many of them are not vaccinated. Uh, too many are not vaccinated. And this thing has the potential uh, or the propensity to blow up again on, you know, on a level unseen because the last time at least people were wearing masks and then their football games and basketball games, they had, they stopped people from coming, which saved a whole lot of lives. But now, because of they, they put money over life, over health, and now uh, it could it could blow up. And it's when it when it blows up, it's gonna blow up the economy as well, along with it. Hey, I, do <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly. Just want to do a quick shout out to. Uh, uh, my friend Shar Watson says she's watching us from New Zealand. So get, there it is, uh, panel. Yeah. Our voice is international. Yeah. <laughs> what I thought was interesting, uh, Lindsey Graham, and I, I years ago, that was in, it seemed like in another lifetime, I thought Lindsey Graham was one of the more reasonable Republicans. Uh, he used to ride with uh, John McCain and he would stand up against all this crazy stuff the Republicans were doing. But but uh, once Trump came to office, he sold his soul to the devil. And I thought it was interesting. He went to one of his town hall meeting back in South Carolina a few days ago. And, and uh, he was giving his little stump speech and he said to them, he said, listen, uh, 
uh, I, I, I need you all to consider getting vaccinated. They said, boo. And he said, mm-hmm. well, he said, uh, I've got mine and, uh, and I, I'm not telling you all to take it, but I want you to consider it. Uh, uh, want you all to know this now, 92% of all the folks in the hospital in, in South Carolina are unvaccinated. Do you know what his people in that audience began to say to him? You lie. That's not yeah. true. Where you yeah. get that information from? You spread, you one of them. They, <laughs> I mean, here is their senator mm-hmm. telling them statistics, facts, data. And they call him a liar to his face. And so he's okay, well, y'all don't know how to do it. He but- cowtail. I, I just don't understand. I thought in 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 my lifetime, my seemed like another lifetime, I was an officer in the Marine Corps. Officers lead. When you an elected mm-hmm. official, you lead. You don't live, you don't let your subordinates tell you what to do. You you right. lead. You you tell them. And so and but now whatever these these crazy folks said to these political leaders they doing <laughs> what they said instead of providing leadership and i don't understand that uh, except they want to hold on to power at all costs if, even if it's causing people to die it means nothing to them dr williams i blame the entire administration when this thing was jumping off how they all tucked their tail and would not speak out on the foolishness that was coming out of the White House from press conferences to the, just stop the press conferences. All the, back then is when they should have stood up. And for to this day, I have very little respect for Dr. Fauci with all this wherewithal is all of this scientific. No, he bit his tongue instead of speaking truth. I don't care what it costs. You've got to be, if you're, in that position, he should have lost his job from his people, but he was silenced until Biden told him that he had a job in his administration. You Look, if you don't stand for something, you would truly fall for anything. And Lindsey Graham was silent for far too long to come out after uh, half a million people are dead to say, I've got mine. And I, I w- wish you would consider getting yours. No, it's too late. You're, you're, you can't save face, it's too late. Look, the, the, the integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. They say, I say integrity is doing the right thing all the time. It was wrong and little did we know as a whole the death sentence of that propaganda early on by that previous administration. And it isn't just Lindsay, it's the, the pences all the way down. Everybody that let this madman run them up in the White House and use this as a political football. And now we're in the, look, if they say 660, uh, uh, but I, I beg the difference. I believe that is far greater and those numbers are downplayed. Yeah, they got some gunshot victims in there that they claim is COVID, but I think the numbers are actually higher than what they're actually reporting. Yeah, it went over 700,000 last month. Um, I think it's far greater than yeah. that. Is, is, yeah. Oh yeah, it's far greater than that. I would like to push back just a little bit on Brother Bill. Me and we've been agreeing, but I know he was going to kind of go there with Brooke Carlton, so I got to push back a little bit. Brooke <laughs> uh, Fauci was very wise uh, because even though he didn't directly go against Trump, he constantly tried to warn the American people the best he could because if, notice, Trump, Trump, doctor shop, I think that's what they call it, where you go and find whoever you want to do do your bidding. And if 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 he had a guy, uh, uh, Dr. Fauci out of there, he would have got this old nut that they got here in Florida as the Surgeon General, put him in there, and he would have nothing but spewed all kind of poison. And that would have just made things, it just, it would have been on steroids. And then, but then secondly, with Lindsey Graham, uh, I, I I don't like nothing about Lizzie Graham anymore. And it'll be, it, God got to speak to my heart for me to ever like him again. I, and I just said, well, you're a reverend. You, you're supposed to like everybody. I, I beg to differ. There's no <laughs> way in the Bible where the Bible tell you to like anybody. The Bible say you to love them. And when you love them, you love them enough to speak truth. You know, yeah. like, I want to hang out with you, drink beer with you, go fishing. No, I don't like you. 
but but mm -hmm. I do love you enough to do what I need to do to tell you the truth. But but what I will say about Lindsey Graham is that I will give him credit, even in this toxic environment, he's still trying in a unique in a in a sneaky way nudge a few of them crazies to go and get a vaccine. And I believe everyone that you can help potentially say is, is saving my life or saving my mother's life or my loved one life. So even though he's a wacko, he waited, he waited late to come, Jenna to come late to the party. He did show up in the wrong costume and they ran him out, but he did kind of let them know that you need to do this. So I yeah. would I would give him credit that he at least tried to make a attempt to say, we've been lying to you, but I want to tell you the truth now. And they won't they won't buy what he said. Yeah. Right, Doug, that, let that, me push back just a little bit on Fauci. Uh, I was always told that silence is consent. Mm -hmm. He was speaking wise, scientific early on in the pandemic. But when it came to his job and, hey, what I got to put your, your stuff on you, Dr. Wayne. What proper <laughs> man to gain the whole world? Mm -hmm. huh? is, is that not your stuff? I, I can't hear you. <laughs> what profited a man over a uh, half a million dead because he tucked his tail? Why for his job? Oh well, six hundred. Oh, Brother Jerry says over seven hundred. Three quarters of a million folk. Now we just talking about the U.S., but we know that foreign news gets a lot of it leads and, and and they follow us and we call ourselves the leaders of the free world, but y'all, we're jet lagging. We're, we, we, we're falling short, big time. <laughs> big time. All right, you know, go ahead, Vern. You, you. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have to push back against Bill. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it would have made one difference in the world. I think it, uh, Dr. Fauci was wise in what he did because he, he at least he stayed there enough to, 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 to make sure things get handled maybe in the, in the background of things, okay? Unlike I know they was in a in a difficult situation when they had that nut in the in the White House. So I I don't know. I I think we've been better off with him there than not there. He would have just lost his job, but another one that lost his job and wouldn't have accomplished anything. That, that other lady, what what happened? She she acquiesced. Uh, she faded off the scene. What's that other lady's name? That's that? bird or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I whatever her name was. But anyway. Um, she Just she think. sit there. She sit there when Trump said that you can drink bleach. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, at least Doctor about to put his hand over his face. Yes, he yeah. did. Yes, he <laughs> did. Hey, okay. hey, hey, bro, Vernon, you said something very important. I, I'm not sure you all are aware of this, but early part of 2020, uh, uh, Trump advisor. Uh, uh, maybe on economics, I forget what his position was. He had got the information about the COVID. He went into Trump and told Trump, you must shut down the economy because if you don't, 2 million people can die. This is just how deadly this virus is. Do you know what happened? Trump literally cursed that dude out and told him to get the blank out of his office He's not shutting down anything. Right. Mm -hmm. did, right. did you catch yeah. that? So, 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 but Bill, if you speak truth to him, he's going to find a nut, as the term Bravernon Bra used, who would tell him what he wants. Well, and then yeah. he'll make him get out front and tell us that. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Fauci never really lied to us. He, he bit his tongue. He tried to stay out of his sight because Trump will pull the trigger on you in a minute. He tried to keep from, from accepting a bullet, but at the same time, he would try to give us as much factual information that he could until it was all clear. You know, I just, uh, I, 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 I hear him talking now, but I can't lend any credibility to what he says. That's all. I, you know, uh, if I was a man, you're gonna have to world, stop looking at Fox News. And my soul didn't yeah. matter much to me. <laughs> I probably would have sold out as well. So, yeah, okay, he's a sellout, but uh, it, 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 look, man, lives, I, some of that blood is on Dr. Pouch's hands because if he just stood, lost the job and whatever, hey, man, that's just okay, me. Okay, Bill, I got a question for you since we discussed it. What could he have done? He could have been more outspoken with, I'm sorry, Mr. President, you're wrong on this one. 
Yeah, he was going to lose his job. Ain't no doubt in my ex Would military it change mad anything? about that. Would it change but, anything? But the world was looking to Dr. Fauci back when it mattered, uh, panel. They were mm -hmm. looking to somebody to say, hey, look, nobody stood up against this Goliath, man. But Bill, it, it but, Bill but Bill, this is what, but, you, this is what you may want to consider. As soon as Fauci started trying to do that, Trump stopped the meetings completely. He did. He yeah. shut down the press. So, so notice, Mitt Trump, he, he like, that's how he, he said, you went off script, brother, you ran off the plantation. <laughs> I, I got slaves working for me. You ran off the plantation. So he said, I tell you what, you all won't even talk anymore at press conference. Whenever there's a press conference dealing with COVID, I'll be the spokesperson. You remember when he started doing them? Yeah, so, yeah. So Dr. But Fauci tried to do that, but he went off script. And Trump said, I got something for you, there, young brother. Bam! Mm -hmm. He pulled the trigger on him. So I I, I admire Dr. Fice, uh, Dr. Fauci immensely because he he stood there and 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 and, and, and he tried to stir the ship during this, this turbulent time. He tried his best under you, you if people really knew how demonic Donald Trump is. Right. You, you had to have some people with there. You. That just like they just like the general, the chief of staff, they you have to have some people that you like you said to keep things in order. You know, I I I think that if Trump had had his way, put all his stupid cronies in him, that we we'd have been sunk right now. Okay. Yeah. Some people had to be there to 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 keep the ship sailing. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move on. I know that we we can talk about that the the idiocrats all night. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna move on to with calls and be, and then we're gonna talk about after that we're gonna talk about the funding of HBCUs and the infrastructure bill. But I definitely wanna um call to talk about uh, not only his um what he's doing with the people there in uh Illinois but the write up in this national is uh, national international um, magazine that um, that he uh, has. Go ahead, Carlton. Let's, let's talk about uh, the misconduct and all of that of, of law enforcement that you yeah. been working with. Definitely. Well, uh, thank you for having me here to speak about this. And mm -hmm. I want to say uh, I was waiting to say something because I wanted to be the bridge between the conversation on COVID and the conversation on overall public safety with policing reform. And so I'm sure uh, a lot of you have seen in the media this week that uh, several uh, deadlines are coming up in big cities around the country, like New York, Los Angeles, et cetera, including here in Chicago, where uh, people are, uh, uh, well, where the cities are saying that law enforcement and other city workers have to be vaccinated by the deadline or they're gonna lose their jobs or essentially be put on uh, unpaid leave, which is, you know, you have a job, but you're not getting paid for it is essentially what that is. And so I know that uh, a number of police unions and other labor unions representing city workers have pushed back on the vaccine mandate and are threatening to, uh, well, they're essentially telling uh, their officers not to get vaccinated and to uh, resist uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, the order to do so. And so there are a number of officers now who are not vaccinated. I know here in Chicago that Mayor Lightfoot has opened it up so that instead of mandating that they get vaccinated, she's only requiring that for now, they get tested twice a week, every week, which they have to pay for out of their own pocket and they have to do on their own time uh, they're not going to be able to use time for their job to go toward it. And uh, if they don't have that done by the end of the year, and uh, they then have to be fully vaccinated after the end of the year. And if they're not, then they then go on that unpaid leave. So there's a lot going on right now with law enforcement. We're also seeing a lot of law enforcement retire or resign early because of the vaccine mandate. They were That was already happening anyway as a result of last year's protests for Black Lives Matter and police accountability. And uh, so we'll see what happens going further. But I just wanted to say that, you know, when we're looking at the vaccine mandate and how it was handled, I know a lot of people are criticizing Biden for the way that he's issued the, the mandate. 
because of what Jerry and others said earlier, there was not a lot of good communication, a lot of mixed messaging. And ultimately what that's resulted in is a lot more or exacerbating the division in our country, even more than it was when Trump was president, which is sad to say, but true. Our country is a lot more divided now than it was under Trump. And, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, Biden's president, so uh, his administration has to take accountability for that. I'm not saying that Trump's administration did not lay the foundations for that division. Obviously, January 6th was a culmination of that, but we have to be honest with the fact that our country is more divided now than it's been in a very long time. And the vaccine mandates have made it worse, not better. Uh, and that all has to do with the rollout. It was not done well. And so at this point, we're looking at how law enforcement, even the military, there was a report that came out today about how hundreds of thousands of active duty military are not fully vaccinated, even though they're supposed to be. Either they've only gotten one shot and they have missed their deadline for the second shot, or they haven't gotten any shots at all. And but now the question is, where's the enforcement? You know, can we really afford to not have full capacity of our active duty military and our law enforcement? I, 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 let, 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 let me just kind of go, because I'm going to transition this over to the next conversation. And so, you know, can we really afford that? So uh, recently, I just came back from a trip from Milwaukee. And I was out there for about a week working with the city of Milwaukee on policing reform. And uh, I'm about to go to Rockford, Illinois to do the same thing there, and then Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Grand Rapids, and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to say is that I'm in these communities around the country, not like, you know, speaking about them like an academic, like, oh, let me just look them up on Google and get some stats and then tell you what I think. No, I've been on the ground in these communities. And I'm telling you right now that the gun violence issue is very real, okay? Uh, it is running, gun violence is running rampant all around our country, especially in our black and brown communities, not only in Chicago. It's happening in Milwaukee. It's happening in uh, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids in Lansing. I mean, it's happening in New York City. It's happening everywhere. And at the end of the day, can we really afford to not have full capacity of our law enforcement, you know, when we're having an uptick in gun violence? And at the end of the day, we're not getting the Black agenda done. Voting rights is not getting done. The infrastructure, even if it gets done, is not going to benefit Black people, which is what Jerry's about to talk about after me talking about the cuts they're making to the infrastructure bill, how that's going to impact the amount of money that was originally allocated to go to HBCUs and has now been cut down to a fraction of that amount. We also know that the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which was promised to have gotten done by President Biden, was not done. All right. So at the end of the day, as it comes down to our people, the Black agenda, all right, Black Lives Matter, it's not looking good right now. And it's not looking good in a country that is more divided now than it was in the four years that we were under the last president. That's saying a lot. And Biden's polling are showing that. So I just want to say, I just want to say that going into the discussion on policing reform, we have to be realistic about the circumstances, right? I know people talk about defund or abolishing law enforcement, in my opinion, I just don't see how that's realistic under the current circumstances when we know we're having an uptick, a real uptick, not media driven uptick, a real uptick in gun violence in our communities. That's happening because of the lack of investment, the amount of people who've died in our communities because of bad health, if it be due to COVID or not COVID. We've lost a lot of people. We've lost a lot of talent this year. You know, we lost DMX. We lost uh, Biz Marquee. You know, the list goes on. These are considered legends in the hip hop industry, all right? Losing them in their 50s, uh, the brother from Wire, you know, uh, we lost him from ODing on drugs. Our situation, the Black agenda, is not doing well right now. And at the end of the day, we, we're not seeing support from the Biden administration when it comes to supporting the black agenda. And so what I'm saying is, 
at the end of the day, we cannot rely on the federal government to get a lot of this stuff done, even though we need them to get a number of these things done, like qualified immunity. That's up to them to get rid of that, okay? But they're not able to come through to the finish line. So what is it we can do? And that's what I want to talk about today. I just told you about all this stuff about the certain circum. Let me finish real quick about the circumstances. But what I do want to talk about is what we can do. And what we can do is focus on state legislative efforts and local efforts, both legislative and grassroots. And the uh, the written piece that Jerry mentioned earlier, which was published a couple of weeks ago in the Systemic Diversity and Inclusion Group which is an international group uh, that's led by Dr. Imwe out of uh, University of Maryland, I believe, or uh, uh, University in Maryland. Uh, it's uh, a LinkedIn group that has put together this international policy journal that uh, provides information from innovators all around the globe on what is it we can do going further into the 21st and even 22nd century, right? How can we start to not only think ahead, but start to act? ahead as well. And what I talked about in my journal piece, in my written piece, is how for us, we have to start looking at decertification of law enforcement. In other words, the license that law enforcement has to be a police officer, to arrest people, to use force and be able to get the privileges and protections to get away with it, right? Justify deadly force. That power is given to them through a license or a certification for that state. So that way, if they do, let's say, commit an act like killing somebody and now they're under investigation, that officer can resign, leave that law enforcement agency, go to another law enforcement agency, get a job there, and then engage in misconduct at that agency in that jurisdiction. When they come under investigation again, hop around from one police department to another, engaging in misconduct with no accountability. And the way to stop that is through state legislation. In other words, by making sure that there are certain criteria that will take away an individual's license to be an officer, to have that authority. And what I talk about is Illinois, where I live, uh, that state law, which was enacted this year, I worked with the Legislative Black Caucus and other government officials on advising them on the policing reforms in the Safety Act, also known as House Bill 3653. House Bill 3653, Illinois. Now, with that legislation, it is one of the most progressive in the country that's been passed into law ever since George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's deaths last year and last year's national, if not so global-wide, protests for Black Lives Matter and for police accountability. Now, what makes this law so unique is the fact that it has the most solid decertification and certification process that any state has in the country. Why? I'm gonna tell you why right now real quick and then I'm gonna pass the mic over to my brothers. First thing is that it expands the list of what would make an officer eligible for misconduct to not only include if they were to commit any felony in the state of Illinois, it doesn't matter what the felony is. If you are found guilty of it, if you're sentenced, convicted of it, if you plead no low contender to it or plead guilty to it, then you lose your license. That's a big deal. Not every state has that. A lot of them might limit certain felonies, not all felonies in the state that would make you eligible. In addition to that, there's also a specific list of misdemeanors that can also make you eligible to lose your license as a law enforcement officer. A lot of them have to do with sexual misconduct actions, right? And also with deceptive practices. So a lot of times we hear about law enforcement lying, you know, about the investigation to the prosecutor so that the prosecutor can then make the case to then indict somebody, right? Now that kind of issue should be something that if you're found to have, you know, to have engaged in that action, you're found guilty of it, you plead guilty to it, then you should lose your license. You should not be a police officer in that state. All right. That's a big deal. So the fact that Illinois law, like Illinois law now includes these different criteria, any and all felony, the specific list of misdemeanors. And in addition to that, even actions that are not criminal in nature, but that are still unethical to the badge and bring discredit to the law enforcement agency. A good example 
if an officer were to tamper with body worn camera footage or equipment or direct another officer to do that. Also excessive use of force. Remember I talked about earlier about lying and not being honest, untruthfulness. These are all things that are listed under the new law that will make an officer eligible to lose their license. So that's one thing that is a big deal. Another thing that's a big deal about Illinois certification, decertification, is that now civilians can, instead of having to go through this long, inconsistent pathway of filing a complaint through the civilian complaint process, which then goes to the internal disciplinary hearing process, and then ultimately maybe goes to the police chief or the sheriff then filing a report of the officer engaging in misconduct with the state licensing board who's responsible for issuing and revoking the license of a law enforcement officer in that state. You see how long that process is? Instead of having to do that, Illinois law has essentially cut out the middle agency being the law enforcement agency. So now civilians can directly engage and report to the licensing board about the officer's misconduct. And so if an officer committed a felony, somebody witnessed them do it or was a victim of the officer doing it, they can file that directly with Illinois licensing board and that will trigger the investigation for decertification instead of that long process and inconsistent process that we all know with the uh, silent wall, the silent code, the blue wall, a lot of times you don't even get that far, right? To uh, with a civilian complaint. So now that's done. In addition to that, a civilian can do it anonymously. I'm gonna say that again. A civilian can file a complaint directly with the licensing board anonymously. And that is a first for the country. There is no other state that allows civilians to do that with the licensing board. One other thing I wanna mention real quick before I pass it on is that civilian complaint review boards can now also file a complaint with the licensing board directly. And if the licensing board is not able to investigate that complaint, now that civilian complaint review board can investigate the complaint. Now that's huge because now we're talking about not one way that civilians can engage directly substantively in police accountability. We're now talking about multiple ways that civilians can do that. Once again, this speaks to what my model of policing reform is, which is community empowerment centered policing reform. How do we empower those in the community who are usually disempowered when it comes to this stuff? So I just wanna say one last thing, Jerry, because this is the crux of that written piece is that now, this is the biggest deal that I'm gonna pass it, I promise. Now, one mm -hmm. other thing, and this really puts Illinois on the map, and that's what the written piece really centers on, is that typically you have this licensing board that will receive these complaints, they'll do their investigation, then they'll come up with their decision on if they're gonna take away the license, revoke it or not, right? Now, however, instead of that licensing board, which typically is made up of law enforcement, prosecutors, former judges, et cetera, now you have that board having to work alongside a new panel that's been created under this new law called a law enforcement certification review panel. And that panel consists of 11 members. Four of those 11 have to be community members. And out of those four, two of them are appointed by the governor and have to be two persons that are residents of Illinois in neighborhoods where there's high disproportionate contacts with law enforcement, high levels of gun violence, high levels of child poverty, and also high commitments to the Illinois state prison. What does that sound like when you hear that? To me, in Chicago, that sounds like the South Side and the West Side. In Ferguson, that sounds like Ward 3, where Mike Brown was from and where Mike Brown was killed. In Baltimore, that sounds like West Baltimore. And to be honest, even parts of East Baltimore, which was highlighted in the US Department of Justice's pattern of practice investigation. So what we're talking about, what Illinois is now the first to do is actually take directly impacted people of negative police interaction to now have to substantively be involved in the decision-making on if a law enforcement officer 
keeps their license or not. That puts Illinois at the top, in my opinion, for having a solid certification and decertification process. So that's what the written piece is about. And I'm hoping this will be a model for other states, including Florida. Maybe it'll take Florida a decade once Nikki Free gets in there and shakes things up a bit, you know what I'm saying? But I'm hoping for every state, this becomes what we do when it comes to police accountability. Directly impacted people, decision-making power equals true accountability. Thank you. All right, Dr. Dr. William, we're gonna go to you and then Myron. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, bro, for Jerry and for Cotton. Thank you a very, very well presentation. Uh, in a courtroom, they allow you to do cross-examination. Mm -hmm. And I just simply want you to say yes or no. I don't want you to elaborate because you will keep it <laughs> for another 30 minutes. I just want to ask you simply yes or no. Okay, you saying you want the people to do this on the state level. What were the people able to do on stopping that crazy abortion right in Texas? Were, were, were they able to do it on a local level and stop it, yes or no? No. Okay. Our oversight committee board in the state of Florida is illegal. Do you think Governor DeSantis gonna institute an oversight board over the police, yes or no? Mm. Yes or no? Uh, mm. Oversight over the police? Uh, yeah. Just said no. I wanna, because I he already they already made it illegal. They don't want those boards. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, not, a, it's not illegal. Just yes though. or no. That's just yes or no. Yeah, mm. but the, the, the question is, 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 is actually Do you think correct. he would approve an oversight board of the police? It's already been approved. But, no, in the state of Florida, it's not. We don't. It's, no, it's, that's what. So, okay, so number one, I just want to say real quick that if you look at- <laughs> No, yes or no, uh-uh, uh, uh, uh yes or no. I am, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yes, yes telling or no, you no, I, I don't want you to explain, just yes your or no. Question, your question is flawed. Do you That's believe he would do that? It's already been approved. I'm no, no, state you. of Florida, not <laughs> Illinois. Yes, yes I'm or no. talking about the state of Florida. Okay, saying, you can say yes, yeah. but, but yes, yes or no. The answer is yes. I said it's okay, already been yeah. approved. Next, next. If you look at Florida's it, right. law, you they can just passed restricted anyway. voting rights here in Florida. They done made it illegal <laughs> to protest and everything. Do you think that DeSantis will undo that? Do Do you think? Uh, uh, Why would he undo what 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 he's put into law? But no what, what I'm trying to that. say, like, your ideals, saying. they are ideal. But in the state of Florida, they got what you call a super majority in the state houses with conservative uh, Republicans. They, they don't need, you can't do nothing to stop them on nothing. And so when you bring a proposal to them, they look at you and they throw it in the trash can. With the military, you saying that you 100,000 folk don't want to take the shot. Do, do you know that one of the first thing, the, 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 uh, 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 the 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 number one guy in the military. What's his name? Or what what do you call him? Uh, uh, the I can't think of it. Now. The guy really? who who they've been having up there testifying. Really? Uh, the chief? What do you call? What is his position? Really? Uh, really? Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Are you no, talking? No, about? no, no. no I'm talking about Joint Chiefs. Of I mean, Joint, Joint Chiefs. Chief. Yeah. Chief yeah. Right. yeah, the Joint Joint Chief of, Yeah, the Joint Chief of Staff. He had to write. Uh, and, and a directive that in the military, they would not fly Confederate flags and they would not wear mega hats, especially in the Marine Corps and serve them. So you got to understand now that you are asking a lamb to go to a wolf and say, will you not eat me and will you play right? What do you think that wolf gonna do? <laughs> Soon as you say that, he gonna chop your little neck off. So we need the federal government to step in and pass that uh, HB01 and that SB01 and all. If they pass that, that'll devane these vicious, venomous individuals in these state houses across the country who care nothing about democracy and especially black folk. They can care less what you think about ideal policing. And, and right now, with, 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 with this gun violence, let me ask anybody on the panel, do you feel any safe? Uh, do you feel less safe when they talk about all this gun violence? No, I'm less safe with the police. These people who are killing mainly, they are killing the, the ones out there trafficking in. 
and doing, they ain't bothering us. Hey, I've been black 62 years. I have had no, I ain't had no problem with black folk. My problem, when I was in the Marine Corps, these state troopers in South Carolina drew down guns on me and made me act like I, that's where I'm life safe. This stuff about what black folk doing, they want you to talk about gun violence so you can get off of what they are doing and they are back, they're changing the law, trying to put us back into slavery. Now I'm done. <laughs> All right, so can I can I just say that you literally, you and I agree on everything. I said that Nikki Freed, hopefully if she gets in, in a decade, Florida will be on this level. Right now, you're not ready to do that. I know that. And actually, according to Florida's law, Florida does have a law enforcement bill of rights like Maryland. Maryland was the first state to get rid of this. That was this year. Now, I've, I've already done my analysis of Florida's law enforcement bill of rights. You can have a civilian complaint review board. And there are ones that currently exist in Florida. They have existed for years now. Uh, one place is Miami, Florida. They've had a civilian complaint review board for some years. And in the news this year- That's not the on the state level. Let me finish, yeah, let, me, let, me yeah, finish. Yeah, let me finish. That's not on the state level. Finish. It is, let me finish though, let me finish. And the other one that's been in the news more recently this year is in Tampa City. And if you look it up, NAACP's president, I think it's Yvette Lewis, She's been all over the media about the uh, Tampa City uh, Civilian Complaint Review Board. They've been very active and they are trying to get more powers now, but they've always been in existence for quite some time in Florida. Now, the reason that does tie into state law is because Florida's Law Enforcement Bill of Rights is the law that essentially governs civilian complaint review boards right now. And it does prohibit civilian complaint review boards from having disciplinary powers and having subpoena powers. However, on the local level, if your local government officials and your local law enforcement agency are open to it, you can have a civilian oversight authority that has advisory powers, right? Now that's what exists in Miami and that's also what exists in Tampa and that's allowed under state law. And that's why I was saying to you that the answer actually is yes, because DeSantis has not done anything yet to try to change that aspect of the Law Enforcement Bill of Rights law. And so that means you can have civilian oversight authorities like Tampa and Miami in Florida, including in Escambia County, but it's at the discretion of law enforcement and your local elected officials. So I just wanna put that out there that that answer was actually what I was saying on that one. I'm sorry, brother, but it was a yes and it was not a no. Now I do wanna say when, when it comes to the, the military, I completely see what you're saying. I got you on the gun violence and everything, but we have to be, we have to just be real. At the end of the day, if you don't have law enforcement who are dealing with public safety, who is gonna fill in that vacuum? All right. We all know that, let me answer that very it's gonna quick. be gang let me, members. Let me answer that. Let me answer private that. security. Let me answer that. Watch this here. Or vigilante. Watch watch like this. Like George here. Zimmerman, right? <laughs> all right. You got hey, watch this. It's you know what? Uh it's very easily. To, to, to start all over with policing. And you screen every police officer and you set the criteria what it's gonna require for you to remain a police officer. Let's say we lost 50% of police, okay? We lose 50%. There's certainly a way you can maneuver people around who's in an administrative position and you can also use your National Guard to come in to help do some of the routine stuff like traffic patrol and, and all that stuff. You can then, you move, now when you bring in police, you screen them psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. You see what you're dealing with. If you know you bringing in a Klansman and putting him in uniform, and soon as you give him that badge and a gun, he want to go and crack a black man side the head. So that keeping police, it ain't doing us no good. He's still gonna shoot you like a dog. Did you see how they dragged this guy who was a paraplegic out the police car the other day? The guy said, apparently, now nah, they said he had gone, they say they had dope. But regard, he has rights for you don't have to treat him like a dog. They grabbing him by his, his hair and pulling him out the car. And then they gonna like, well, you can walk. Wait a minute, brother. If the guy said that he can't walk, won't you treat him like you treated that guy who was walking down the street when they, George, 
Floyd protesting with a with a with a semi-automatic weapon in his hand after he done shot two people. You saw him as a human being, but then you go and shoot two other black guys. That this stuff has to stop, and we have to begin to cry loud and spare not that all this here, they want you to just talk. But if we got to get angry, we have to be willing to put everything on the line. Say, we want it. We want change. We want change. We want you to treat us just like you treat every. We don't want nothing special. Just treat us fair. Treat us with dignity. Treat us with respect. If you can't do that, throw your badge in and go. Go out there and join your clans meeting somewhere, and we'll find you later. But, you know, Doc, one of the things that, that I agree with Carlton on um, he's saying basically the same thing you saying when he's saying set up these programs within law enforcement. If if they if you decertify, they can't be a police officer anymore. So you both saying the same thing. But I agree that you know the, most of them shouldn't even be on the police force anyway. The police force need to be rebuilt Virginia. from the ground up. Virginia. It needs to be rebuilt. Four Republican county commissioners. Right, right. I'm saying yeah, you know, one Democrat. Do you yeah, but, think that one Democrat gonna get anything passed in Escambia County? No, no. I'm just talking about the program. I'm talking so how about you gonna change the program. They're not gonna even entertain what you're trying to do. Yeah, but but the federal government, the federal yes, government that's can do what a I'm lot, talking lot. About on the federal level. Yeah, but but the decertification that can become national law. What, what they have what they have put in place in Illinois can become you know they always have a test case before it goes national and what they have in place in Illinois it can be a national policy for the rest of the country uh, uh, pushed by the federal government and so that we can have these kinds of laws but you're right the if if um, if law enforcement, can treat everybody else with dignity and respect, but don't have the same the same inclination toward us, then they should not be on the force because too many of them are clan, too many of them are uh, Nazis and skinheads that's, that's uh, on the force, and too many people are coming up missing, especially black. And I do believe, and I know that many of the killings that take place in the black community or people dressed like black folks have polished their skin like black folks are coming in our community, killing our people, and it's blamed on black people. Just like during the, the George Floyd protests, they find that all these people going to jail now, they were white folks who was um, uh, provocateurs have had that that infiltrated the marches so that they can be so they can set fires and we we all saw that the people had no gas can but you can see people fire just the uh accelerated in st louis how how that gonna happen if anybody walking around with a gas can or have some kind of grenade or something so it, it you know we know that there are people who are dressing like black folks who are putting on these masks that look like black people. And they've, we've saw the guy that robbed the bank had this black face on, had this mask that pulled over and fit just like a black person. They found out this was a white dude. And this is the, these provocateurs are invading our community like man. Vernon, you had something? To, you? Uh, yeah, I did, uh, Jerry. I, mm -hmm. I want to go back to Bro Carlton and ask him a question. Bro Carlton, have you been in the military? No. Okay. The reason I asked that because when you comment you made about the 100,000 military not taking the shots and everything, I, I knew it had to be coming from a person that never been in the military. If you've been in the military, uh, you don't have much choice. Okay. You either take your shots or you get discharged. You, you, I, 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 I was an Apple's officer for 32 years. So I know that military will get the shots, I and mean, maybe they haven't all got got them now. But I'm telling you, if they don't. If they want to remain in the military, they they will follow orders. And mm -hmm. that would I just don't want to lead 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 folks to believe that they had a choice in this matter. They don't. Well, they got a choice: either take it or get the hell out. Right. Now, they get, do have get, a choice. Right. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, getting back back. Like, you were saying about the police officers, you know, they got a choice. I, I believe, and, and I believe that those folks that 
resigning in mass. It's just a temporary thing. They're just trying to make a stand right now. These folks are going to have to feed their families sooner or later. And most folks in careers, that's not all they have done in their lives, okay? If you're a police officer, you're going to have to go back to what you know. And you're not going to go out and, and, and serve hamburgers at, at Burger King. You know, he, he just might try to make a stand now. So I, I believe that this thing is short term and it, it, it's, it's going to eventually settle down. They're going to realize that, well, okay, maybe I need to go back and take that shot. Maybe I need to feed my family. We'll see. But like, even if they did, now, and I agree with, I, I agree with the uh, uh, rep there. He's saying that we, we, some of these folks, we don't even need, need to be in the, in, the, in the police offices anyway, in the police department. They need to be gone out of there. Oh, now, one oh, other part, in the military. <laughs> again, oh, in the military, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, 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 you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Just like it was in, in even in the military, we don't care where you come from and what background you had, as long as you follow the orders by prescribed by the uniform code of military justice and all that kind of stuff, you're good. I can't dictate that you I can't dictate your heart. Okay. As long as you don't act on as long as you don't act on those feelings that you have, we good. And that's the same thing I feel about police officers. They can be a racist, they can be a Klu Klux Klan if they want to. But as long as they follow the orders and they don't act on their own personal feelings, well, that's all well and fine. But and when they cross the line, then that's when the hammer should be nailed, uh, put, put down on them. I'm not being to differ on that, Burr Burn. A uh, policeman with a, a, a moral uh, attitude or their lacking cannot patrol people of color. Just, just no way. Your biases are going to make you do what is done daily to us I, in our community. I, I agree. So I and then when, when they violate the rule, just like any other rule, when the old rules are violated, and then that's when they should put the hammer down on No, them. we can't. No, me knowing you are a Klansman mm -hmm. denies you the right to serve when you have people of color that you will be policing. You keep, no, I have well, to I, I kind of disagree with, with you on that, uh, Bill. I don't care if you're a Klansman or not, okay? I don't care about that. As long as you follow the regulations, okay, you can't, I, you can't, you can't be, you can't act like a Klansman. You can act and not those eight hours you being on pay. You can do it the other 16 hours, but not on the eight I hours. I don't think they can, be. I don't think they can separate it, Vern. You are who you are when it's in your heart. That's who you are. Brother You're going to treat well, well, two different stuff well, I, I, differently. Well, I, I kind you of, are well, going to. I, I've done a lot of things in my life that I didn't like. Okay, a lot of things I've done in my life, but I did it because it had to be done and I need to be done. I didn't necessarily like it, but I knew it was necessary to me to be done. But let me finish my other part with, with Carlton, and then y'all can go back. He, he said <laughs> something about the 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 uh, country is more divided under Biden, which that's I what I want to address too, but I got off track on that. Yeah, I, I, totally I do not agree with that. I do not agree with that at all. It is no more divided. Uh, Jerry and I had a conversation about this before we came on. The the Trump really the country has already uh, felt the same way if it felt all along. We did, America is a racist country, and I, I stand by that. Okay, it's a racist country, but we didn't realize how racist it was <laughs> until Trump came along. He made being racist popular, and all those and, and I told Jerry that that what Hillary said, all those deplorables came to the surface, okay? You can see them now. It's just like those Klansmen, that it, instead of hiding their faces, now they're taking the sheet off their heads. Now you can see who they are. And there's always, I feel, that it, it's always been like that. They 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 was there all along. And you got in, in, in this country, is no more divided than what it is. We just see it better now. That's my point. Thank you. Wow, well, we haven't heard from you over there. Howard Gunn. I was oh, I had Howard. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I'm here. I'm listening, I'm man. Here. So much information yeah. being <laughs> here. Um, you know, and I, I think about police reform. I also must think about the um uh, the monetary system that we live under here in America, the capitalism, uh, how it has its effect us in all all walks of life. And being a police officer with with, with blacks playing the highest price for lawyers, the highest price for restitution, you know, this is a money thing. And uh, they're not willing to give it up. And you know, uh, if I can get all of you to pay me restitution for the next hundred years or whatever, 
then I'm going to benefit and I can pay my officers more money. I can live in a bigger house. Again, it goes back to capitalism. It's this money. And that's what runs America. Uh, whether you're a police officer or whether you're an army officer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we live in a capitalistic society and poor people are, are the ones who pay the most. And, and they, they target us. They, you know, they'll, they'll impound your car once they stop you. And, it, and, you know, and then you can get your car out. But then you're going to pay $500, $600, you know, or things like that. You know, it's just a money system that we're dealing with here. And I could go on further. And as the brother Carlton said, you know, he's in Illinois. We know, we know what the police officers are like there. They're like gangsters there. And they talk about the black boys there shooting each other, killing each other. But a lot of this stuff is already motivated by the police officers. There was a police officer with a picture of a deer, and he had a deer, a deer horns on the on the on the on the head of a black man who was killed. You know, and he put it out there. You know, so I, we know how nasty Illinois is. Uh, and, and, and to to say that these boys are gonna get it right, we don't need police reform. Or uh, you know, I don't know if you said exactly like that, but. We, you know, we're not saying that we don't need police officers. We saying that we need to redirect their funding yeah. so that we something for them to to be accountable for. You know, some social classes that they need to take in order to know how to deal with black people when they are mentally ill or other 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 reasons. Yeah, uh, this is a big art. This is a big discussion here. It's not going to be able to. Um, you know, we can go on and on with this. Well, well, right. One of the things. One of the things. But Jerry, yeah, let me say this, Doc. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Carlton was saying we need to decertify these officers, which they have put in place in Illinois. If you decertify, they can't go nowhere else and become an officer on the, on the, um, as a police officer anymore. So that they, you know, if, if you find these people guilty of something and you decertify them, that's safer for us. Than what what we got now, if you know, go ahead. But Jerry, I, mm -hmm. I, want, I want you all to think with me for a second. Uh, I, I don't want to use my age again because I'm probably the youngest one on here. I'm probably the youngest one on the panel. Well, Carlton might be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't. I won't hold y'all youth or uh, y'all seniority against me. <laughs> but 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 I grew up black in America. And in my lifetime, I, I do not know of one case of police brutality where you see a black police, uh, let's say five police, five black police beating up one white man. Right, now, right. But, but watch this, watch this now. In, in my whole lifetime, I have never ever seen one case that made national attention where five black police officers beat a white dude like a rattlesnake, like a dog. So why is it that you need reform for the white police, but you don't need reform for the black police? This right. goes, uh, Vernon thinks it's okay to hire clans and that they're going to be fair. <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm back to the point that me and Vernon, me and Vernon, I agree a lot with Vernon, what he said, but I, I, I agree with both of you all really. And they say you can't straddle the fence, but I don't, I really don't care your ideology as long as you would do your job right. Yeah, I don't care you a Republican or Democrat, whatever, but I agree with Bill, it's hard to separate that when it's so deeply ingrained in you, but you can do it. If you can be a good black police, you can be a good white police, you got to go by the rules. In, in the military, we didn't care, we never asked a person their political affiliation. I, not, I don't know what, if it was probably illegal for us to even ask, we didn't care. When we give you an assignment, we tell you to execute those orders. As long as they go out there and execute orders like you tell them, you don't have no problem with them. And they afterward, they might go and hang out with their little clans, buddy. But it best not come back to the unit. Right. If it come right. back to the unit, we're gonna deal with you. But yeah, yeah. but but with the police, it's a little different because when they hang out with their buddies, they buddies start telling them the tricks how you can do stuff to put a gun on a person and do stuff and try to get away. So, but but really though, the, the issue is that we need to vet them 
Even I don't care. You've been on there thirty years. So what? Hey, you've been a thirty year hey, career. Let, okay, let me tell you the difference. The yes. difference between the military. Yeah. And 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 what we got now is yeah. accountability. Yeah. In the military, there was accountability for your actions. Police officers, there are no accountability. Absolutely. So, there's none because having you can have all the boys you want to, but in order to get there, you got to find them guilty or have bring them to that. But but they how many white police officers they held accountable for their actions, you know? And right. this, this 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 thing they call immune what kind of immunity they give them? That, that, that's a license qualified. to kill. That's mm. a license to kill. Yeah, right, right. In in the military is an autocracy. It's not a democracy in the military, right. but it, it in, in law enforcement, there is no top down that's that's dealing with the whole uh, whole whole deal of uh, law enforcement, like Virginia. in the military. The, yeah, but let me finish this. That in <laughs> in in law enforcement, you know, every every little town got its own own chieftain. You know, that that's that's uh, you know eking out so supposedly justice to the to the community. And that community that they eke out justice to, which is unjust, is usually black people. And they are taking like like how I would say it's a money machine, like they did in, in St. Louis when they found out when they uh, uh when they found out that they was that 80% of the people in that town was given tickets. They was under some kind of um uh, some kind of uh, law enforcement. Uh, deal there. So, you know, it's showing how we are ticketed, how we are over policed and all of that. And this is why we need decertification along with in and qualified immunity. It's, for, a, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a racist money making machine, is what it, it is. Burn and Dr. Williams to think that we can hire known Klansmen to be fair is, is just beyond me. Uh, we got a Facebook streamer, uh, Shar Watson, that says, uh, the police are damn racist to black people and it's not good. Uh, I wish we could get more comments from our viewers tonight on what, what their stance is, especially on thinking that it'll be, y'all know the reason why we have so many problems with law enforcement right now is because they're Klansmen. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Let Carl to say what he was about to say. Yeah, Go ahead, so. So yeah, there's a few things. One thing is I, I want to let you all know, I put in the chat so That's that you right. can look at it while I'm speaking, the Washington Post article about how there's hundreds and thousands of military active duty members who are not fully vaccinated, even though the majority of active duty members are vaccinated. So that does speak to what Vernon and uh, Dr. Williams said about following orders. However, there are still enough of them that it amounts to hundreds of thousands that are not fully vaccinated. In other words, those, like what Vernon said earlier, you do have choice in the military. You can choose not to do it and then you have to deal with the consequences. So there are hundreds of thousands of active duty military who have made that choice. So yes, I have not been in the military, but I feel like the Washington Post article does a great job at detailing it. And please do look at it while I'm speaking. It is in the current chat right now. So you can look at it while I'm talking. And then uh, the other thing I was going to say is that, uh, I'm sorry, Vernon, I disagree with you. I completely agree with Bill. Uh, if somebody is affiliated with a group that is a hate group, in other words, this is a group that has a history and has values that are focused on attacking, harassing, and discriminating against a specific group of people that are especially considered a protected class under the U.S constitution and all state constitutions in the United States of America. No, you should not be uh, uh, working in a profession where you're making money off of taxpayer dollars. I'm sorry. That but is very anti-democratic. And that's why certification you. is important to weed them out so that they cannot do that anymore. And that's the Our point of the art, the written piece I wrote. I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. What, what I'm telling you now is is that but they are working in the system right now okay they just a lot of them just took off a white sheet white sheet and put on a blue one okay in a black so, robe <laughs> right in, in, in robes exactly exactly right and call themselves judges so you know all i'm saying to you is that you, you're right but if there was some 
measure of, of, of accountability for these actions of these folks taken, then we will have a few less, uh, a few less incident, but there's no consequences to their action. And so they're, they're embold emboldened to do what they want to do. And so we got to build some accountability into them. I can say, you can, I can, I can hire a Klansman to work for me. As yeah. long as that he does what I need him to do on my eight hours yeah. and don't and, 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 and don't try to hang somebody, but that's fine. <laughs> I can't control what he does on his on his on his time off, but I can control what he does in my eight hours. Now, if he did something and I never enforced it on my eight hours, then it's on me. And I like what I'm saying now. That was a poor system. parable. That, 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 well, that was no, right? parable. That, I thought somebody, that was a good that was a good somebody no, that no, you no. know is morally not right. or it lacks integrity. It's mm -hmm. not okay that they are good your eight hours. No, that was a poor example. You, this is no, what I, I want to say. You, you, I want to say you, this. Watch this here. And in regards, and I, I think we have to really to take a deeper dive at, at a position that the media and certain people with microphones are doing now. They are taking the voice of a what I call an outlier uh, anomaly, uh, a person that's outside the bell curve, and we're giving them validity. You know, y'all know what I mean by that. Yeah. We, we out, out of the one million service personnel, or uh, two million, how many about now? I've been out twenty years now. I don't keep up with those statistics. Statistics. We are focused on this little anomaly who don't want to go along with the rule, and we make them. We act like they have a valid point. You don't. You are the 10% that we always call in the Marine Corps that gonna always go to the bottom and them the ones we spend most of our time dealing with that 10% that won't comply. And we, we kick them 10% out, another 10% go to the bottom. But we always had our top performers. We always had 10 that'll go to the top. They will always, once get that 10 go off, another 10. And so we have to quit focuses on these nurses, these polices who that won't do right, focus on the ones who are doing right. Come back to my question again. Do you all know in your lifetime, one group of black police who have beat up a white man, been on video and it was okay. Do y'all know of a case? Any case, you a lawman, you the, law, you the attorney. Do you know of one case in your research, your study, your practice, one case, sir? What Where I do know black, is this. Four or five black police beat the crap out of a white man what publicly. I, do you? What I, what I do know, what I do know is this. What I do know is this. I do know that Florida has a post commission. Florida is actually one of the leading states in the country on decertifying officers. So I do, I want to throw that in there because I'm sorry, Miss Dr. Williams. I'm sorry, <laughs> Vernon. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, everything you're saying. Uh, I don't know how that adds up with the statistics out of Florida. Florida is one of the top states next to, I believe, South Carolina, and I think Georgia, perhaps. I know that now Virginia is also leading, and I believe Colorado is as so well. So your and answer we know is no. Your answer is no. What you don't my, know my, one my, case. You don't know no, one what, case in the history I, of America. You don't know one case. <laughs> I, you don't know can one I, can case. I can I finish? No, correct. Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> this, this is my answer. My answer is that with that many officers being decertified, I am curious if Florida has had a situation where there have been majority Black officers beating up on a white guy. And because they're Black and they're not white, the decertification process went through and those officers lost their license, Black officers, while white officers who did something similar to a black victim are still on the force. You That's don't the think point they would showcase that on CNN news? No, I you don't think, think they would. You don't think I don't that think would be would. all over the world that no, black no, men, black no. police are beating up no. on innocent white folks? In Florida? You don't think in that Florida? would make the news? In Florida? In Florida? Definitely yes. not. Definitely <laughs> not. Definitely all right, I've been hard <laughs> enough for you. I'm going to give to you. I swear. But yes, for Carlton, Carlton, um, what uh, programs do you have in place or the fraternity or, or the fraternal order of the uh, Black Police Association has as it comes to recruiting young black men to become officers? So, uh, okay, so when it comes to recruiting more black people, number one, I just want to put out there 
just because you have more black people on the force doesn't mean you're not going to have the same instances of uh, racial discrimination against black people. I mean, look at Freddie Gray in Baltimore. Uh, I think three of the officers out of the six were black people, you know, who were involved in his death. Who trained uh, those officers to treat black people that way? What I'm saying, I bet they didn't train them to do a white person that way. Their chief, all them trained. Why, why black police think they can get away doing with that to black folk? Because they see the white people doing it and they partner with them when they first training. They take them out there and see how they do them, stick guns up their nose and in their ears and stuff. Then, and the black dude, he crying, ain't got, he can't get no lawyer, he going to jail can't get no bail. So the black police, we got them right here in Pensacola. Someone tried to run for high office. When they was street officer, they used to beat blacks like, just like the white dude. Now they want to run for the, I said, and, and I cried against them. They don't like me, but I don't like them neither. I ain't <laughs> talking like them. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, if we gonna recruit, we gonna recruit black officers, recruit, now nah, I'm with bro Bill on this, recruit people who have a moral compass. I treated, right. I always, my whole life, I've always tried to treat folk right. I stand, I, I don't try to stand with who's right. I stand for what's right. I stand up for what's right. And if you're a police, do your duty. If I, I love police, but be an honorable police. Treat, treat, yo, treat that boy just like that with your son. Treat that daughter like that with your daughter. And, and, and then you go home when you do what's right, you can sleep at night. And it's, it's inherent danger being a police. It's it inherit doing a lot of these jobs, flying an airplane. Uh, it's a lot of inherent danger, but that come with the territory. But that don't give you right to dehumanize and treat people wrong. And that's what I'm saying. We can get black officers, but don't get one of them black who like, who on oh, did Jane go? We ain't gonna let no Negro sleep on these sheets. Yeah, yeah but you know, right, I, so, like, go, go I, ahead, Tom. Yeah, I, I was gonna answer Howard's question. So. Uh, just to, and please, Dr. Williams, please let me do answer at this time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so in my opinion, what needs to happen is like I mentioned earlier, what Illinois has done, where they have that long, that, that longer list now, an extended list of what would make an officer uh, eligible to be decertified. Now, that same list in Illinois is also used to determine if somebody who's new and wants to become a police officer or somebody who's transferring from one police department to another, right? If they are able to get that job at that new law enforcement agency, right? And so having that list together of felonies, all felonies, right? And also certain misdemeanors and certain actions that are unethical to the badge, that should be considered. Now, what I do wanna put out there as well is that we also need to look at juvenile records. Now, this tends to be the biggest issue that is a, a, a barrier for people of color, especially black people, to get jobs in law enforcement. Because a lot of times, because of the communities that black people are growing up in, especially in, uh, not just in all over America, not, not especially anything, all over the country. You know, uh, we know that those records, once somebody's older, they've learned their lesson, they're not engaging in criminal activity anymore, they're living their life on the straight up. At the end of the day, that can be a barrier on a background check, right? It comes up and now they're like, oh, you were convicted of selling low level marijuana when you were a kid. So we're not gonna make you, we're not gonna uh, consider you to become a police officer. If anything, those are the people you definitely need to be police officers because they understand where the youth are coming from now. And it's the youth in particular who are really getting riled up in the gun violence issues that are happening in all of these black and brown communities across the country. So to be able to have officers who were you when they were younger and can speak to you in that kind of frame. That, in my opinion, is how we're gonna bridge the gap when it comes to trust and distrust between law enforcement and the community members that they have to serve. One other thing I would say is that that same level of community engagement, in other words, opening up the doors so that people of the community can now be a part of public safety and not siloing it so that it's only law enforcement doing this also has to do with making sure community members are a part of the hiring and the promotions process, right? Making sure that community members are a part of the trainings. And I've talked about this with y'all before, incorporating community members who are from these directly impacted zip codes in these mandatory law enforcement officer trainings, like implicit bias, like cultural sensitivity, like use of force. Because when you do that, you break down these assumptions. Oh, you're a law enforcement officer. 
I hate law enforcement. I don't care if you're black, Asian or whatever, you're law enforcement, I hate you. Oh, you're a civilian. You don't understand where we come from. You don't understand what we deal with. All you ever do is get in trouble. You're coming out of a broken down background or whatever, whatever. These are all assumptions that we all have. And these are the biases. It doesn't matter what race you are. All of us have them, okay? But it's all about how do we break that down to look at the commonality? What are the things that we actually have in common? We're human beings. We all came from somebody. We're all going to be dying, okay? That is a fact. Nobody gets to live outside of that as a human being on this planet. So at the end of the day, these are different ways we can have people be involved in it and discipline. We already know with civilian oversight authorities, like I talked about with Dr. Williams, which is doable in Florida and has been happening for quite some time now in Tampa and in Miami, you know, that's a way to get community members more involved in the discipline aspect. And so is decertification. That's what I'm saying is that Illinois has now taken this idea of community empowerment centered policing reform and has applied it to the licensing of law enforcement who engage in misconduct. And to me, I think that is the next level of evolution when we're talking about police accountability. So I just want to, I hope that was uh, helpful, Howard. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it, with that being said, you know, it, it throws me to another question as it, as it pertains to uh, 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 restricting the use of guns or, or having people held accountable for these guns that are on the street, especially these gun manufacturers. Uh, uh, you know, there's too many guns here. And should they be held accountable for the number of guns that they're putting out? We make no guns. We have no manufacturing gun companies. But it seems like there's more guns in our community than we've ever had before. So are they just unloading guns in our community, just dumping them out and telling us, hey, come get a gun, then we shoot each other? Uh, you know, what is your take on that with the amount of guns on the street or Second Amendment? I believe in that. My last name is Gun. I own guns. I collect guns. But I'm a responsible gun owner. But when it comes to people putting guns in our community and then we see the number of people being killed on, on, on a summer night in, in, in Illinois or in Chicago, 13 and 15, you know, it, it brings me to think that, you know, maybe these companies need to be held accountable for, for the number of guns that they're producing. Well, OK, so then so then you're saying that you're a gun owner, but then you're also saying that these companies who are essentially providing you with the guns that you own should be held accountable. Now, I just want to say, you know, that's going to be complicated because of what you just said. Now, we Re all know. Uh, well, I mean, the fact. We yes, the fact responsible well, gun owners. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that the people who are selling guns illegally to people who are not allowed to have guns are legal gun owners, right? The straw buyers. And so that right over there is a major problem because how do you, how do you regulate and control people that either own guns because it was gifted to them by a family member or a friend, or they bought it off of somebody who legally bought the gun from Walmart or Kmart or from a gun show. I mean, how are you able to regulate all of that when it's happening everywhere all the time? And well, that's what, what I'm saying is- If they did it in the tobacco industry, they can do it that way. You can do it. Are, are restricting the ammunition uh, 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 usage like we are now. You can't even buy ammunition for some guns now. It's so tight, you got a waiting list to buy ammunition. So maybe so, we can restrict the, 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 the use of ammunition. We can't stop the guns, but we can stop the bullets. So I agree with you, but I just want to make sure that you're clear on what you're saying, because essentially, if we were to actually do what you're saying, which I'm not I'm not in disagreement with it. I am in complete agreement with what you're saying. But you understand that people who are responsible gun owners are going to also be adversely impacted by that kind of decision. And we're already looking at people who are unvac who are vaccinated and how they're upset about how, oh, now we have to do all these things because of these few people who are not gonna choose to be vaccinated, but I got vaccinated, so how is that fair, right? So it's the same idea. Why is it that me, who's a responsible gun owner, has to deal with the, with, with the consequences of people who are not responsible and who should not own a gun? So I'm, I'm okay with it, I'm not a gun owner, right? So I can be like, well, I'm okay with it, I, I'm okay with just doing that, but if I was a gun owner, and it was harder for me to get ammunition, I would probably be upset, you know? And I would probably say, no, we need to still have ammunition, but we need to figure out another way to go after the illegal gun transactions. 
And that, in my opinion, I think that's where we are as a country right now. We're in between a rock and a hard place on this issue because we have people that use guns legally and responsibly, and then we have people that don't. So who well, do we go after? Well, How you go broad after, should it be? Well, you go after those who are underage who are getting guns because, they, you know, it's, you mentioned the vaccine and those who are not getting and those who are getting. With an underage buyer, he can't get a gun legally. So that's that scenario wasn't really a comparison when, it, when you talk about the vaccine and the gun owner. You know, you look at the 21 year old or the 15 year old who can't really purchase a gun, but yet he can he can get a gun. He can own a gun from the street. So that brings a, you know a, a lot of issues up. That somewhere there needs to be some restrictions. I think. Well, where, well, did he I, get, where, my, where did he get the gun from, though? That that's see that that's what I'm trying to say is where did he get the gun from? He didn't get it from the gun manufacturer. He got it from somebody who purchased it from the gun manufacturer or somebody else legally, right? Somebody like, like yourself, but not you, you know, but who, unlike you, is not responsible and is going out into these communities and selling these guns from the back of their car to people who are underage and who should not legally own guns. And so it's like in order to hold, in, in order to hold the whole thing accountable, you're going to have, I have to also put restrictions on you, Howard, on people who were responsible gun owners. And if you're okay with having those kind of restrictions on you, then I, like I said, then I'm okay with it. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if you'd be okay with that. I think we Carlton. should. I think we should be restricted with gun uses. I, I, I really do. I have no problem with that as a gun owner. Yeah. Carlton, right, Carl, no. how how is that any different than what they did in the tobacco industry? You know. Whatever they did to the tobacco industry, I think it could work for the gun industry. You know, they didn't even, they didn't make it illegal, but they made it so expensive that only the real folks and, and if they if they were to do that with bullets and guns, it's too many bullets and too many guns are available now, and anybody can get them right now. So if, if they if they tripled the, you know, like the cigarettes, I, I never thought when when I was young, a, a pack of cigarettes cost fifteen cents a pack. Now what what they what they cost? About five dollars. <laughs> okay, okay. Now not not very many people doing that. When I was young, I didn't I didn't I bought cigarettes because they was available and they was cheap. Okay. But I think something along the same line that they did for the tobacco industry, even though the tobacco industry claimed they weren't responsible for folks dying, but but they the one that made the tobacco, they the one that put the yeah. nicotine and they did all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, they made it available, and particularly in the black community, made it available for folks to get. So mm -hmm. but they put restrictions on that. Why can't they put restrictions on guns? Well, you know, Congress passed a law that the gun manufacturers could not be sued under any circumstances, uh, regardless. And that was a Congress that was passed in Congress. So that's why it's so hard to to uh, deal with the the gun manufacturers, and you know. And but you got all these what what uh, like Carlton was saying. There are people who are legally buying guns in bucks, and then but they selling it to kids on the streets because they making big money off. These kids are paying for a thirty dollar gun. They're paying three four hundred dollars for it. So they they making money off of off of the death and frustration in our community. So they, you know, they going to continue to put those guns out there because it's, you know, it's not killing white children; it's killing black children. I and think the, that's what Brett Howard is saying, but Jerry it, put it, restrictions it, on the people who are buying them legal, and now you hold them accountable for allowing these guns to get in the hands of illegal people. If I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. Uh, I'm a whatever that word where you I got a permit to carry. I, I'm I'm permit to carry. Mm -hmm. I have I have a couple of weapons, right? But if I take my weapons and go sell to one of these little thugs out there in the street, and then they go and kill someone, if they're gonna hold me responsible, I bet you I won't sell no more. But <laughs> but so so if they they hold the people who are doing the illegal portion. Look, they need to do background checks. They don't need to let them guns get in the hands of mental people. They don't let them need to get in the hands of those got criminal records who who know to be violent. If you are if you are a domestic violent person, all that they need to do these background checks on these people that need to be a cooling out period. 
before they put this gun in the hands of these people that that's no, not going to be responsible. And that wouldn't infringe on my right uh, to be a gun owner. But I want to go back to Brooke Carlton. I looked at that article that you sent about the military. The Navy is on track to have 98% of all the sailors vaccinated by the deadline. The, the, other, the other military, they got like 80. Uh, they, and, and, and that article said that we believe that when this deadline get a little closer, all the military people are going to get in line. So, so once again, we don't need to focus on these outliers. They playing, they playing Trump music. They drinking his tea. But when they, as, as Brother Vernon said, when they realize that they got to go and start serving hamburgers or they got to go get in the unemployment line when they got a, a job paying them six or seven or hundred thousand dollars in the military, wherever police, they ain't getting up that job. They gonna let them stick them in their arms. So we don't even need to focus on them nuts. They don't even need to get no airtime. In fact, they ought to be shunned, but I said I wasn't gonna do that. I said, <laughs> what about the Marines? Okay. What about the Marines? What about the Marines, Marines was like 76%, I think. 72%. 72, but watch this. The, right. Hey, <laughs> who you think got the most clans out of all the branches of service? I'm Marines. just saying. But, yeah. but, just saying. but them, them <laughs> clans gonna get in line when it come time for them to get in the unemployment line. I get they ain't gonna get out them slots so black people can get those position of colonels and in general. They ain't, uh, 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 a lieutenant colonel. They ain't getting out. They they gonna stay right in because see Trump promoted all them nuts while he was in Trump. Trump just you he he really messed the military up. But but and they in position. But Biden <laughs> and and in the in the in the Defense Department they 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 reversing a whole lot of that stuff. And they're gonna get it back on track. So these 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 cronies for Trump, they're gonna be out there with Trump. And it, it, well, I said enough. Yeah, Doc. You know oh. that, uh, that's that, we gonna have to we gonna have to end it there. You know we don't went way over. <laughs> and and uh, but we always do shout outs on our voices. So we'll start with you, Bill. You got a shout out? Yeah, I, I have a shout out, y'all. Thank y'all so much. These conversations are so needed in our community. I love our Facebook stream, our interactive viewers. And uh, I just, uh, just am proud to be a part of the panel. I love that we can disagree and go right on loving each other. But uh, now's the time where everybody, be it you're watching us on WBQP, Roku, uh, wherever. Maybe you're watching us at a later date on uh, the uh, WBQP channel. Uh, www.themacintosh principle, wherever you may be viewing us from, please know that this is the part of the show where we ask that you help us if you can. We ask that you do your best. We need your donations to keep on having these types of conversations, informing and transforming. Now, we have the Our Voices and the Community Conversation and the Less Talks, but we don't uh, do this part of it. So, it's been a month, I think, since we've done in our voices. So if we, if you can, please send us a donation to P.O. Box 1024, Cantonment, Florida, 32533, or click on that PayPal icon on the Macintosh principle. We ask that you do your best. We have so many loyal viewers following us, especially on our Facebook stream that has been so generous in the past, but some of you we have not heard from. We would like for you to just, if it's only $10, we do the background of the research and we don't just come and throw anything at you. We try to make sure that we are actual and factual and we value your opinions as well. It's our voices, not just the panel's voices, but our voices, which means it's your voice as well. Uh, to the panel, thank you, Carlton. Uh, we have to start somewhere. So with the grassroots, I think they are vitally important to and getting people in positions of how to make real change. Uh, but um, I feel Dr. Williams as well, the federal government, which uses our tax dollars, we need it. So thank y'all, everybody, Brother Brown everybody, Brother Jerry, Miss Carol, get, I hope your mother gets well. Amen. And Brother, Brother Gunn, Gunn. He, his picture isn't on my screen. <laughs> yes, sir, Brother Gunn, thank you. Brother Gunn, you got somebody you'd like to shout out? Oh, yes, uh, definitely to your wife there and her mother. We wish her a speedy recovery. And uh, just want to thank everyone uh, for the conversation tonight. 
and all the listeners. We hope that we're saying things that are benefiting uh, the, the people. Uh, is this a people movement? We have to keep the faith. We have to move. You know, God works in mysterious ways, gentlemen. You know, we're talking about what all they are trying to do, uh, all they seem to be doing. But God can bring another pandemic and shut this thing back down again, and he can stop Trump, Trump boys in their, in their tracks if he chooses to. So let us stay prayed up and, and be faithful one to another and show some love. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Bra Bill and Bra Howard. They said what I want to do. I want to do a shout out to your wife for her labor of love uh, uh, towards her mother and you as well. And I just want to lift them up in prayer uh, that they uh, will continue to strengthen her as, as she multitasks and doing so many things. But before I do my just a 30 second prayer, I want to give a shout out love to Vernon, to Bill, to Carlton, to Howard, to you. Doc, I love being with you all. And I want you all to know I'm passionate, but ain't nothing that I won't do for any one of you. I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. I love you all. I respect you all immensely. You all are magnificent, marvelous uh, personality. And I'm speaking from my heart. People know one thing about Isaac Williams. If he says something, he means it. He might smile, but I certainly mean every word that I say. I love you all, brother, and I respect you all immensely. God, we just thank you so much for privilege of prayer. And at this very hour, God, we come in your presence. We lift up Sister, Sister Carol and her mother and Brigeria. Yeah. And, and I pray, God, as we lift them up, you will lift them up and grant them everything they need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And Burr, you got somebody you gonna shout out tonight? <laughs> no, I just well, hope the uh, uh, Carol's mom get, gets better, uh, uh, Derry, and and I tell uh, guys, I, I appreciate the conversation, and and yeah. uh, I, I just I look forward to uh, bantering back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> no, just want to thank all of you for uh, uh, for um, uh, uh, fiery conversation. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we try to do is make sure that we bring um, knowledge to the table, something that everybody can benefit from. And um, I want to thank especially Brother Howard Gunn. I know we had talked about we were going to do the farmers, uh, uh, fresh food. We're going to talk about that. But Carlton, I thought this was so impart important that we talk about police reform because oh, yeah. we see things are still getting out of hand. If you watch the social media, the things that are happening on social media uh, with uh, how black people are being treated, how they are being humiliated uh, in the streets and in front of their children and their wives, you know, just beat a man down in front of his, his wife and children is absolutely asinine to me. And it's one of the worst thing uh, that slave, that, that slave mentality of, uh, these people that's on the force is doing and is to try to humiliate you so much that you don't participate in anything that to bring fear and mm -hmm. suffering to to black people as we were in slavery. And I, I you know, I hate when I hear um, some of the guys on TV talk, I'm, I'm afraid, afraid, you know, no, don't be saying that, you know. Don't be saying I'm afraid. No, say, you know, you are tired of this. You know, we that's what we got to say. We are tired of this, not being afraid of anybody because that's what they want. That's what, that's right. you know, to, to totally humiliate you to the point that you won't do nothing. You won't rise up and defend yourself and defend your community of women and children and uh, will allow somebody to beat your wife in front of, they got to beat me too. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the fight. You know, but the thing about it, it's just cruel the way they do things. Hey, Amen. Yeah, it's Carol. Hey, Carol. Hey. Hey. Uh, finished? Anything locked down? <laughs> we still on the air. <laughs> Y'all still on the air? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She can come in on the conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she off. <laughs> she thought well, we were I, off. Uh, but I, anyway, I, I, well. go ahead, Vern. 
Oh, I, oh, I, I was gonna uh, just give my shout out. Okay. I want to give a shout out to both Jerry and Carol for uh, you know for leading this discussion and uh, every week, and also uh, to the other panelists for making it you know really interesting and bringing a lot of different perspectives. At the end of the day, there's no right answer. I think we're all just trying to figure it out together, and we're doing it the right way. We're talking about it. We're debating. And then we're coming up with some solid solutions. I'm, that's, that's what I think at the end of the day that will be workable. I also want to uh, say that uh, uh, Carol and her mother are in my prayers, and so are you, Jerry. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope that her mother has a speedy recovery. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to all Black people in America. Like I said, uh, right now, we're in a really bad situation. And I, I'm sorry, Vernon and Dr. Williams, but yes, our country is more divided now than it was under the previous president, and it's not getting any better. Biden, unlike uh, Obama, who he was vice president for, when Obama was not able to do anything uh, through federal legislation, what did he do? Almost immediately, he started issuing executive orders and executive actions, okay? That's what Biden has not done. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act failed three weeks ago to a month ago now. What has Biden done in regards to issuing executive orders or executive actions related to policing reform? Nothing. He hasn't even given a speech. At least Obama gave amazing speeches. And even Trump would give a speech, even though we wouldn't agree with it. But at the end of the day, Biden is who Biden is. And I think we all have to be realistic that he is not a president for the Black agenda. He is a president for the blue collar agenda. And that's why he's pushing for the infrastructure bill. And the blue collar is really going to benefit more white people than it is black people in the end. And so I guess next week's show, uh, that will probably go into more detail about the HBCU issue and all that. But yeah. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. All right. Well, um, and, um, Jerry, I can I make one last comment? I can <laughs> make one last comment. I, I, got a, I, got, I can't let you go. Oh! One of the things, <laughs> one of the things calls you, you got to understand now, you, you're a lawyer, you know this better than most, okay? Executive orders only apply to the federal government, okay? It doesn't apply to outside of the, uh, the federal the federal system, okay? No, we can. So it, it, it would be limited as far as he's concerned. So we need congressional action to make it happen across the board. That's all. Yeah, but if we can get that foot off our neck for the next three years, that should be nice. <laughs> and I, I do want to put out that, that 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 Obama's executive order on restricting the transfer of military style equipment from the 1033 program, the federal government program to state and local police. He did that. And that mm -hmm. was through executive order and that did impact state and local police. So no, executive orders can definitely have a direct impact on state and local efforts. It's just that Biden, unlike Obama, is not choosing to use it for that purpose. I agree with that. Right. I agree with that. I agree with All right, that. All right, y'all, we're going to have to run. I'm going to have to probably go out to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, all right. but uh just want to say um thanks to everybody and thanks to everybody that watch uh especially our, our continuous uh, friends on uh that that you know watch us on facebook those who watch us on youtube on vernon channel wbqp tv is ruku channel fire stick uh and our youtube channel so we have a lot of avenues where people can watch the show and we will continue to try to grow and develop. I want to thank Vernon for partnering with us uh, to make sure that this um, is spread it far and wide uh, so that we can all um, benefit from it. And those who, who, who listen to the show benefit as well. Want to recommend a book for those who, who love history. This one is called Stolen Legacy. Uh, that one. And uh, my soul looked back by James Cone, James Cone, James James H Cone. So we got a lot of books that we're gonna be recommending that people uh, for recommending reading for recommended reading um, in the future. And we will be doing this on every show about uh, how books that we think ought to be uh, people ought to be reading. On that note, y'all, we're gonna say good night. And I will talk to y'all Sunday, next Sunday. Good night, everybody. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. All right. Good night.
原来